okay and the second one is a choose function so these are already existing in the uh, reporting services in SSRS right so the same functions the C uh, Microsoft Corporation introduced in the SQL Server 2012 the before in the 2010 2008 uh, to 2008 uh, we didn't find these functions and uh, some more functions are parse function and try parse function and the next one is EO month function end of month function okay so first we will see about this uh, EO month function what exactly this EO month function will do in older version if you want to find out the end of month for a particular date for example so today date is how we will get the today date so you have to give get date okay right so this is the get date will come as per your computer 2016 9 milliseconds okay so from this date what is the end of month for this month so to the current month is September 9th right so how can we find out the end of month for this date in older version we have to do some coding but in 2012 we have one straightforward built-in function that is evo month so this evo month will give end of month for this particular date see the end of date for this particular September is 30th of the September 2016. Simply you can get the EVO month. Okay. But we don't have a start of the month function. So how can we find out the start of the month function? Simply you have to do date add mm minus one month. So if you are minusing one month, what it will do? it will take last date of the previous month so again you have to add one more day dd comma one so it will give the first date of the sorry so you, you can't do like this way so what you have to do for the starting uh, start date of the month so you have to write down in the older format date get date from this get date if you want to find out the start date of a month what is the today date so 20th so total how many days 20 days so how will you get the number of days from a particular date so you have to use day function or date part function so what I want to do I want to minus these 20 days from this date so how can we do date and dd comma so how many days you want to do minus i want to do day of get date it will give the number of days so i want to minus these many days if you're minusing what will come last date of the last month so you just simply add one day over here date at dd one for this day so it is giving the September 1st. So what I did here, I am just minusing the number of days. Today date is 20th. So that 20 I am getting from here. If you are minusing 20, okay, if you are minusing 20, it will give last date of the previous month. So I am just adding one day for this date. So it is giving the first date of this month. So if you want to find out the first date of the month, so you have to follow like this way first date of the month okay and the second one is this is end date of month okay so the major function now what I want to discuss in this session is EVO month end date of the month okay so the EVO month will give end date of a particular month okay right 
So the next function I want to discuss is IIF function. So what exactly this uh, IIF function will do? Okay. So this IIF function will check the condition. Okay. It will check the condition. So it will check the condition. For example, my condition is if 50 greater than 30, if it is satisfying this condition, if it is true, what it will do? It will display this name. What I want to write down? I want to write down REAM. If it is false, then it will display this condition. That is KAM. So previously we can find out these functions in the SSRS. See, RAM is coming because 50 greater than 30, it's true. This condition is satisfying and it is returning true. Then it will give the first result if it is true. If it is false, then it will give the second one. Okay. And the next one is choose function. So choose function means if you have a, a particular number, it will take the index. Index means this is 1, this is 2, this is 3 and this is 4. Based on the number, whatever the number is written in here, so it will take that position of the value. So third means developer. So it will print the developer. See here, developer is printing. For example, in one of my table, product table, select star from this table. So I have a different product IDs. Okay, product category IDs, distinct. Three, one, two, four. Three IDs I have. Okay. So if the ID is one, I want to display the category is A. If ID is two, I want to display the category is B. If it is three, I want to display the category is C. And based on the order. So I have to write down the query like this way. By using the choose function, the product category ID. So if it is one, it will take the category name is A and if it is 2 it will take B if it is 3 it will take C if it is 4 it will take D if it is 5 it will take E okay so you have to do like this way execute it see based on your uh, product category ID it will take the strings over here index first it will give index 1 2, 3, 4, 5. So whatever the value is coming in this product category ID, it will take that position, whatever the string you are mentioned here. Okay. So this is the choose function we are uh, uh, introducing in SQL Server 2012. In 2008 to 2008 after before, we didn't find this function. Okay. So the next function is parse function and try parse function. So what exactly these functions? If you observe in uh, previous versions, we have a cast function and convert function. So these cast and convert functions to convert the any kind of data types into a particular data type. So this parse function will convert only the string values into integer data type and date time data types. Only string values, the parse function only for converting the string values. Okay. So it don't work for any other data types. For example, 
I have this function parse function. So I'm going to convert this string value into integer. Okay. So if I'm executing, yes, it will convert and it will display the integer number 100. If I want to convert this value, it is uh, throwing error because this is the combination of uh, a numeric and string character value. So it don't convert uh, the combination of the convert the combination of character and numeric values. Okay, so it will convert only a numeric string data type, the numbers in string format. If you are making, uh, if you are adding any characters, it don't convert into integer data. Then what about this uh, try parse function? The try parse function means, yes, it is trying to parse, means it is trying to convert this value into integer. Yes, if it is converting, if it is able to convert, yes, it will give the result, converted value. If it is unable to convert, it is not throwing any error. It is just giving a null value. If it is unable to convert the value, if it is unable to parse the value, then it will give null value. So that is the reason they are mentioning try parse. If you are able to try, yes, you can try. Otherwise, it just uh, written null value. See here, it is able to convert. It is able to parse the value. So that is the reason it is giving 100, 100 result. See here, it is unable to convert, it is unable to parse this value. A100.000 as integer. We'll execute this one. So it is unable to convert, it is unable to parse this value. So that is the reason it is displaying null value. Whatever the values it can parse, it will convert. If it is unable to convert that value, it will display null value. But the parse function is not like this. It is, if it is unable to convert, it will throw the error. Okay. So that is the difference between this uh, parse and try parse function. So these two functions also uh, are also introduced in uh, 2012 SQL Server. So the total functions what we are finding in the two, 2012 end of month function, parse function, try parse function, and IAF function and choose function. Thanks guys. Thank you.